Hello, I'm Jeff Finch, product specialist at Boyer Kia in Belleville. I've been with the company for 13 years. Uh, we're moving into greener pastures with uh, electric cars. If you're looking to uh, get one, come and see me. Um, we're doing the Confessions of a Rock and Roll cameraman today, the Grizzlies episode. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Confessions of a Rock and Roll Cameraman. Today we are talking all things Grizzly and Canada. I'm your host, Pat Canavan, and to my left is... Well, he's not a rock and roll cameraman in this one. You're a grizzly hunting cameraman in this one. Yeah, I, grizzly, but hunting with my camera. <laughs> and that's <laughs> qualify that. <laughs> and let me qualify your name, Tony Wanamaker. Thank you, Pat. Awesome. As you can see now, rolling under his name, the name. Uh, so, Tony, Project Grizzly is a complete departure from rock and roll, guitar playing heroes. And you're hired by a guy by the name of Peter Lynch, I understand. Yeah, yeah. And he's a, he's a Canadian, well, he's an independent sort of Canadian uh, filmmaker. Yeah, he's uh, one of Canada's best directors. And uh, yeah, the project, I worked on with uh, with Peter and a number of other projects. So yeah, we have I, been I, doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, I wanted to know how, how, yeah. how it is that you got to know him. Well, I met him. He was producing a thing called Video Culture Festival. So that's how I first met him. And oh, okay. uh, I was there on assignment with New Music with the J.D. Roberts. We met and we felt a chemistry immediately. It was a good kinship. And, oh, terrific. And that yeah. just kept rolling. So it was a great pairing between director and DOP. And Peter had a lot of balls because as a director, he allowed me to be creative. So he would give me some parameters, uh, Pat, some ideas of how he might want to photograph something, then allow me to create, allow me to be a DOP. Yeah, that's it's great. Important. Yeah, it's very important because a lot of directors are very hands-on and this is, you know, you just fulfill my job. Yeah, and I'm not really a point-and-shoot kind of guy. And you know that, and yep. I like to get involved and like to get into the creative, and that's just who I am. That's my idiosyncrasy, man. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, so tell me about... So tell me about the process. So, yeah, long story that we were doing a number of spots, and then one day uh, Peter came to me and said, hey, I found this this terrific quixotic character, a guy named Troy James Hurtabies, and yeah, we're going to make a movie. And I went, what? And he goes, yeah, and uh, this isn't his book, but this is something that, that Troy had written, right? He's kind of a naive writer, tons of mistakes in there, but, you know, his heart's in it, that's for sure. And his book called White Tape was in it. And that book morphed into a project called Project Grizzly, folks. And uh, Peter and I shot this movie. I shot this uh, Super 16, as a matter of fact, and I'll tell you why in a second. But that became uh, one of the top 10 Canadian films of all time. And I'm proud that, uh, that my name is on it right there. And you'll see it, right? Boom. And that's kind of cool, all right? Uh, yeah, Quentin Tarantino, and you kind of know him. Yeah. He said it's one of his top 10 films. Really? Eh? Yeah, that was pro I was woken up in the morning to read the Globe and Mail to find that, that out. But nobody got shot. Well, almost. Okay. <laughs> that's true. Now. I have seen the film. <laughs> we did take you up into the Rocky Mountains, okay? So I was up in the Rocky Mountains, all right? You got to love this part of Canada. It's fantastic, yeah. right? And I had to film a scene where uh, Troy was about to, uh, to meet a grizzly bear. And he was going to, now Elizabeth's going to give me a close-up here. This is the Ursus Mark 8 suit I'm showing you. We were experimenting with the Ursus Mark 6, okay? So imagine, you know, the movie RoboCop? Yes. Come quietly or there will be trouble. So he has his exoskeleton. Okay, he makes, and he walks like Robbie the robot, and he wants to have, he, the intention is for close quarter bear research. So he wants to get into a bear's den, he wants to get up and close and document what happens. Behold, the ultimate in anti-bear technology, the Bear Buster 5000. Okay, so let's step back. <laughs> let's step back a second here, okay? Because we've just stepped right into RoboCop. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. But with bears. Yeah. Peter Lynch and you get together to make a film about this guy Troy, who's making suits about bears. Yes, sorry. Or not about <laughs> bears, but I guess it's an anti-bear suit. It's it bear protection. It's bear protection yeah. from yeah. a grizzly, yes. which is a phenomenal predator. Like if, 
Why? Why is he making a suit? The story goes, and I'll give you a truncated version, the abbreviated version. Troy had an epiphany in the woods one day. He comes out of the woods with a canoe on his back, and he looks up, and he sees the old man. He calls the grizzly bear the old man because some of the white on his back. You know, think of a silverback gorilla kind of analogy. So he sees a grizzly. <laughs> yeah. He was smart enough not to run. You don't run when you see a grizzly bear. You don't make eye contact when you make a grizzly bear. You stay exactly as you are, stoic, and don't move. Okay? Now, this is the premier land predator, and it will attack you. Sure. Now, it doesn't always go after people. If you stand there so and quiet, it may just walk by you. If it has an issue with you and they're unpredictable, it could attack. But you can't run away from them, Pat. You know why? They gallop like horses. They can do 56K sustained. Oh, wow. So That's you can't fast. get away. That's, that is it's impossible. So is Troy in the Rockies at this time? Yeah, yeah. So the culmination of this, this suit was we shot scenes in North Bay, scenes in Toronto, scenes here and there. And finally now we're going to be camped for a better part of two weeks in the Rocky Mountains. There's no heat, man. So the only way to get up there, and Pat will show you, you'll see some clips, as I have a helicopter and I have a limited supply of fuel so I can only move so much stuff up the hill quickly. And that's where I do my La Dolce Vida shot, right, where I have the suit hanging in the sky as he's flying around. Uh, additionally, uh, I have to <laughs> commute by horse, horseback. It's the Wild West, dude. Are yeah. you where, where the heck are you in, in Alberta? Uh, in, in the yeah, Rocky side, yeah. Alberta side of the Rockies? Exactly, <laughs> I am in the Alberta side, as a matter of fact. Okay. Yeah, and which is good because I'll tell you the difference between catabatic and anabatic winds and why that's important a little bit later. So we're up in the Rockies, no heat. Okay. Sure. And we're doing something slightly illegal. We are baiting because we want to get the grizzlies to come in. We have to see them. I need to photograph yeah. the grizzly bear. Okay. Right. So so far. Yeah. In the movie, can I? Can we just recap for, oh, okay, for people? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So in the movie, Troy has made some suits, and yeah. and you have tested the suits. Yes. And you you shot all of that on film. Extraordinary to watch the testing. Okay. This is one of the tests, actually. This is a test in the new movie that Ron and I were making. But yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and so he's testing the suits, and now at this part of the film, uh, you're flying out to Alberta. Yes. Yeah. With oh, very good. With yeah. the suits. Yes. And you and Peter and and the gang and you've probably got a whole arsenal of people, yeah. right? Yeah. Keeping you safe. Yeah. Oh well, what's amazing is our operators today, Rhonda, Elizabeth, and Katie, would know this because as soon as I land and get all the gear there, I'm looking at the weather and I'm going, no weather network right then. So I'm looking around, going, oh boy, we're in for it. I said, folks, all the tarp you can, lift the cases up, put everything away. Everybody's exasperated already. Now we got to do the eleventh hour chore. I'm glad. I wake up in the morning, a foot and a half of snow, brother. Wow. Wow. Is right. And I'd look out in the field. <laughs> In a part, partly box, partly not, is the suit sitting there by itself. By itself. <laughs> oh, and it must have been freezing, right? Because it's probably not heated. <laughs> yeah. And so from there, you had to, to haul up well, into, the, into the wilderness to try to track a bear. Well, into the wilderness. There's two things I had to do to get ready for this. Because I knew I'd be perched on a mountain someday, looking at my binoculars, looking for a grizzly bear patch. Sure. So I had to get into that mindset, that aesthetic, right? And so what happened was... Over here in, in Prince Edward County, because I live in Belleville, I took riding lessons. So I'm not riding a horse every couple of days practicing, right, to get used to this horse. And I, shame on me, I became really close to the horse I was working with. I was galloping. I was doing all kinds of stuff I'd never done before. Um, and I, I can't remember the horse's name because I think it was something simple like Joe. If it was Jebediah, I remember, but right. Joe, I, I'm having trouble with. So you're out in, <laughs> in now in Alberta on horses— <laughs> oh yeah! Trying to track grizzlies for the final scene of a, of this of this movie. Yes, and I put out some toys here because I'm shooting film, so you can see yeah. it's really easy to do to make those calculations in your head to expose film. Okay, so I'm shooting with an Aton XTR. Okay, what that means simply is I'm shooting Super 16. The reason I'm doing it because I know later I can blow it up to a 35 mil release and it'll work, okay? We only have so much money. And it's the first time, folks, I was ever given a million and a half dollars to shoot a project. It was an amazing responsibility, but we nailed it. So we're up in the Rockies. <laughs> We've been <laughs> uh, we're trying to get a grizzly bear and I'm trying to stay warm. So I'm sleeping in the cook tent, which is not a good idea when there's a, a predator about. You're sleeping in the <laughs> cook tent with I'm taking, the food. I'm taking exactly with the food. 
Very astute. And I'm sleeping with uh, the, the first camera assistant did a great job, a guy named John Coigne did a great job. And we're taking turns because I gotta stay warm, man. But I know that if a grizzly bear does come, we're the, well, no, we're not the first ones attacked, we're the second because he'll go for the food first and then they're going for us for dessert. Right. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Wow. But I persevered, we pulled it off, and then it came, comes in one morning. <laughs> grizzly bear spotter. <laughs> Whereabouts? Holy smokes, Pat. So I have to go get me horse. <laughs> of course you do. And I get me pack horses and I get me cameras and I go, boys, I got to head down to that right now. I'm on my way. And I set up and there's a picture of me like there on the mountaintop waiting. Holy smokes. I set up my camera and lo and behold, man, you see this beautiful animal coming in over the savannah. And uh, Savannah the Valley, I stand corrected. So here it comes over. What was amazing, it was eating uh, a horse. There was a horse somehow, had collapsed, it was dead. So the grizzly had come in and was spotted eating a horse. Yes, so I'm called, it comes back in, because I guess the original call was somebody saw it feeding, it split, it came back. But it's okay. not one of your horses. No, 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 no. It was on the camp. No, and it was bizarre, because there was an, I always remember this distinctly, there was an alpha horse and it was white stallion all the other ones are darker color it's bizarre so I, these are the so some of the wild horses that these yeah, are from around horses, Al man. alberta yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, right. and okay. so they come in i guess to to, to pay homage or bereave their fallen comrade or what but, the f happened to our buddy <laughs> but you see the grizzly goes down he eats for a while and he lifts his head up looks around that alpha that white stallion actually came really close to him right and as if to say hey I just want you to know. And then turns around and leaves and the rest of the horses follow. That was incredible. That's nature, you know, you know, uh, dictating its own. That's um, amazing. It was amazing. And so this animal, so I'm engrossed looking at my lens and seeing all this happen. Because to me, this is spectacular, right? I've been waiting for this for two weeks and finally it's happening. We right. are actually running out of time. I think in a, a, another day we had to leave. So we're finally getting a scene. The call goes out. Troy, get your ass together. Bring your suit. Get down here. We need you. And we're going to send him down the valley. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned catabatic, anabatic winds. Yeah, yeah. There's a phenomenon that happens out west. We know this. I'm a pilot, right? So we have to watch the change in winds. The catabatic, generally in valley, heats up, and the winds are going uh, down. <clears throat> okay? Anabatic, when heats up during the day, it goes this way. So you got to watch when it switches. So I'm set up on the hill, <clears throat> and I'm cognizant of... <laughs> where I'm standing in the wind, because I don't want my scent to transfer to the bear. Right, of okay? course, because grizzlies have a great smell, right? Six times more powerful than a bloodhound. They don't really use vision, although they can see like you and me, but because it's so profound, their, their, their ability of pheromone detection, right, that they rely on this, right, more in this than they do these. So you wanna, you wanna stay scent away Fair, from, from the bear. Exactly. So everything's calm. Everybody's collected. I hear now the other guys have come in. Now, we have security. Okay. Okay. Maybe we weren't supposed to, but we have security. I think it's a prudent move. I'm glad that we had security. So we have two guys. One guy is an ex-Vietnam veteran. Okay. And the other guy just likes to play with guns. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right. So these guys are from the North Bay. Now, I have guys, cowboys, from the Calgary. And these guys get together... And one group doesn't like the other group, okay? Oh, nice. Somebody thinks that you're not really a cowboy, and somebody thinks that, yeah, you're not really a cowboy. So I'm worried, because I'm in the middle of it with my little Aton camera, worrying that they got rifles and guns and knives, and they <laughs> really, really don't like each other anymore, these two parties. Somehow we get them to convene on this, 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 this uh, mountain uh, uh, precipice to look at the grizzly bear. So everybody's convened now. My other shooter, Patrick McLaughlin, has come in now. He's set up in another position. Everybody's radio. We're ready. Right. I have to stop here for a minute and tell you the most magnificent shot I ever did. One of the most magnificent. I see this grizzly get up and stand up. And in my mind, it's 15 feet tall, maybe 1,500 stories tall. And it stands there, looks around amazing so majestic right <laughs> and then it dropped down and it, now it's coming towards me oh okay. really so i'm on a hilltop there's a small gully below me okay almost like my moat and a little bit of terrain some brush and that's where the horse lies the grizzlies there the winds had changed so now they're catabatic right okay right and now they switch and it's the other way so what happened is the wind changed it picked up my scent 
Oh, wow. It's that part of the day because it was early. Now it's switching over and the winds are going to heat and go this way. So my scent is constantly rifling toward all the human scent he's picking up. Okay. So now the grizzly is racing towards us. I'm a filmmaker, man. I'm going, what a shot. Yeah, this, this is, is amazing. Perfect. Look at that. Whoa. And then I'm shooting and suddenly, bang, holy smokes. What just happened? I'm cognizant of, I realized the first concussion bomb just went off, the warning, right? The bear goes, <laughs> still, now it's pissed, it's coming, right? And I believe at this point it's in the gully and it's coming up, right? So it's gonna kill us, right? And so finally the second concussion goes off and I'm getting freaked out because I'm kind of moving away from the lens, I'm getting ready to run, all right? right? I'm actually looking for my horse, right? All right? <laughs> and so the second one went off and it went, <laughs> and then it went 90 degrees. And I went, Whoo! The Vietnam vet comes up to me and he says, hey, Tom, he says, that was getting close. And I went, I'm still excited beyond belief about what I just filmed. Well, sure. And, and, uh, and he goes, you know, I had, I, had, I had lined up. I was ready, but there's a problem, Tom. And I said, what's that? And he says, his skull is so thick. I don't know if it would have stopped it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's amazing. Here's a life jacket, but I'm not sure if it's <clears throat> a flotating device. But this this was this was a huge encounter with the grizzly for you. It was massive. It, and it was really exciting that that finally happened. Troy arrived late. I was suspicious. Troy had a lot of excuses that day. I would I wouldn't want to go up in front of a grizzly bear. And I think he purposely was sloven so that he didn't have to do it. He missed the opportunity. Uh, Troy is a quixotic character. If you know the story of Don Quixote, it yeah, makes yeah, a lot yeah. of sense. And that's how I envision my good friend. Really? Uh, he that's... was a lovely guy. Uh, years later, Pat, we uh, reconvened. And I, Ron and I tried to uh, launch a, a sequel movie, right, called The Bear Odyssey. And we're going to pick up on themes that uh, Peter Lynch did such a good job on, but it was time to, con the, to tell the continuation of that story. Sure. His next uh, and this is a picture of it. He was working in a suit called the Ursus Mark VI. This is the evolution, the Mar Ursus Mark VIII. Okay. And the reason he, he calls it Ursus, Ursus is derived from the scientific name for grizzly bear, or what they call the North American brown bear. And that is uh, Ursus Arctus uh, Horbalis is the scientific name for the grizzly bear, right? Wow. So years later, we worked another project, and sadly, you know, it's tough. You know this. In our business, there's highs and lows. There sure it can are. be really low if you're not used to it. So great things have happened. The movie was a massive success. As a matter of fact, in the Toronto Film Festival in 1996, I was so pleased that my film opened this festival. That festival. Kind of a big deal. Yeah, sure is. Uh, and, but that goes away. All things move on. Time has a way of, of moving forward. And uh, there was a dark period for uh, good friend Troy, you know. And uh, anyhow, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a terrible tragedy in North Bay. We lost him. Rest in peace, Troy Herdebees. And uh, I talk in great detail, uh, respectfully, in the book about this issue. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this is the forum for it, but uh, I can say to Troy and his family, uh, incredible times, incredible experience. I'm sorry you're not with us. Uh, yeah, rest in peace, my friend. And, and what a great way to pay uh, homage to a guy who influenced your life yeah. as a filmmaker. Oh, yeah. You know, just because of his yeah. actions as a person. And it's an entertaining story, a crazy film. Uh, just from the impact of all the impacts you see happen to, to Troy in his oh, yeah. suit along the way. Um, so, yeah, Tony, what an amazing adventure. And to be so close to a grizzly uh, in that way. Because, you know, filming nature is a very difficult, time-consuming, um, and all based on really luck, timing and luck. Well, to that point, and thank you, I made it a part of my book, it's called Wild Kingdoms, to talk about some of the unique animals I've had a chance to film. And as we know, that's not common. We're getting less and less, and we're having endangered species. There's all kinds of species that were sighted now. Uh, and I'm a big proponent, get out there, go see these animals where they naturally live in their habitat. Uh, and it's really important to, to talk about the other species on this planet and our interactivity because um, it's not so prolific anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We've pretty much taken all the ground. Yeah. 
Yeah. And later I'll be talking, we're going to talk in the future about when I was in Borneo with the orangutans and how unique that is and how desperate we are to save those animals. They, there's only two islands they exist on. Yeah, I know. Well, Tony, on that happy note, <laughs> oh, we right. just want to say thank you again for giving us a great opportunity to see what it's like to be a filmmaker, to have great uh, in-depth conversations about people that you worked with who have impact in the Canadian film industry, uh, certainly with Troy uh, trying to build a bear-proof suit. Yeah, amazing. You know, for yeah. amazing. So I really want to say thanks to, to uh, you for that story, and I also want to say thanks to everybody tuning in. And if you would like to see more of us, and I hope you do, like and subscribe on YouTube and also like and subscribe on our RSS feed podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Samsung, Google, and all the rest. And thanks to our local business representative. Fantastic. And help us out a lot. Coming in from uh, Boyer uh, Kia today. Fantastic. And um, again, thank you. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.